Hello, welcome to the DevForce 2010 Silverlight Quickie. I'm Ward Bell, VP of Technology at IdeaBlade, and your host for this short video introduction to DevForce and Silverlight. Our goal is to take you from file new to a working DevForce application in the shortest time possible. Now the emphasis is on fast, we're not looking for pretty, and we're certainly not looking for the right way, uh, at least not just yet. You know, if I'd never used DevForce before, I'd want to know, does it work and is it easy? And we can find out in, in four basic steps. We'll start from file new with just is amazingly simple, nothing to it, DevForce Silverlight application template. Then we'll model your database with Entity Framework and we'll flesh out the main page view with a data grid that's going to hold some customers. And then we'll tell DevForce to go out and retrieve those customers and pour them into the data grid. So let's go do it. We're ready to go. File, new, project. DevForce 2010, we'll do it in C Sharp. DevForce Silverlight application. We'll call it Quickie. Let it generate our projects. There's a Silverlight project and a web project. All right, our next move is we want to add a new item. It's the Entity Framework. So we want to add an ADO.NET Entity Model. There we go. Uh, we're going to generate it from the database. There are no connections yet, so we're going to go find um, the Northwind IdeaBlade tutorial that we installed when you install DevForce. It'll go uh, find that connection string. Now it's going to go look up the schema. When it does and we generate, we'll be pluralizing and we'll also be including the foreign keys in the, in the model. That's new with Entity Framework 4. But first we have to get a model. Alright, we got some tables here. Let's pick a couple of objects. We're actually only going to use the customers in this demonstration, but you get the idea. Let any framework do its thing. Okay, and also you see the DevForce did its thing, generating some code. Uh, here's the model. Uh, we can refine it if we wish to, um, but we're not going to. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look and we're going to see uh, that that was our EDMX. This is the DevForce uh, generation template and this is where our code is that we generated. Alright, and uh, I'll just scroll that down like so. And um, you'll notice that we also have a link file to that same one right here. If we click it, uh, we know we're referring to exactly the same code file, so we're using the same code file on both the website and the Silverlight side. Uh, so we've really done everything we need to do um, uh, right now. We'll just, for safety's sake, we'll build a solution. And we're ready to do some UI. All right, you can see that in our template we have this text blocks text block um, that uh, you know we we is a low dev force we don't need that. Uh, I'm going to flip over to design view here, and believe it or not, this little puppy's right in here, and we're just going to expand that out so that we can uh, put our um, controls in here. Now, there are a number of ways you can go. Some people like to use the the um, data source window. Uh, there is nothing there, so I'm going to add a new data source and I'm going to go, it's going to be an object, and you'll notice that it found our Quickie uh, Silverlight assembly, and if we drill in, you'll see that we have a number of the objects that we uh, built, the number of entities that we have decided to build there. We're going to add the customer entity to our uh, data sources. The data sources window is incredibly slow, which is one reason why 
Uh, I personally don't like using it, but many people do, so I'll show it to you this way. All right, so it is uh, reflected into our customer and found a number of things about it. Uh, we can do some tweaking here, so we can say, yeah, don't generate any of that with the UI. You know, don't put that in the UI. We can tell it what kinds of controls to prefer. Uh, but that's enough for now. What I can do is you'll notice that it's prepared to, by default, uh, uh, construct one or another of these um, uh, controls on the canvas when we drag it. We're going to use the data grid, so I'll drag it in there. And I'm going to say reset all to snap it into place so that it takes uh, all the available space. Uh, I'm inside the data grid, so I can use the um, the collections wizard here, and I can improve some of the layout here. So, for example, I could move the ID up to the top. A lot of people like to do that. Uh, they might want to move the contact up. They certainly want to move the company name up. And this is just straight Silverlight. There's nothing um, Dev4C about this, so we'll just let that go. Let's save our page. And now what we want to do is we want to go into the code behind. Well, we want to do that for our demonstration anyway. And we can see that we have a uh, handler, a user control loaded handler generated for us as part of that data source process. So we'll uh, uncomment this part. And then we'll try and follow along with the instructions. Um, OK, so it's going to get a collection source and um, out of the resources. And we're going to have to solve that. And then it's going to set the, uh, the data somehow. Well, the problem uh, right here is that that's a placeholder. We want to get rid of that. We want to put the actual name of the key in there. In order to get the name of that key, uh, well, a quick way to do that is to switch to XAML view here. And if we look up, we will find that collection view source, and its key is right here. So I'm just going to copy that and go back to the um, code behind, and I'll put it in there. So now we'll be getting that resource, and we'll actually have a collection source. So now we want to actually set the data. Well, how do we do that? Our first step is to create an energy manager, that's a Dev Force Entity Manager, uh, from, well, let's, let's new one up. And, and the one I want to new up is Northwind IB Entities. Now, how did I know that's what I was going to do? Uh, because I know that's what will have been generated for me uh, in my generated uh, file. You'll see that there's a, uh, uh, Northwind IB entities that inherits from the Dev Force Entity Manager, and what it what it really is is it's got some some sugar in it, some t syntactic sugar in it. Among the things that it has in it are these entity queries that are prepared for me for each of the types. I'll be interested in this one, and it generates an entity query. So uh, that fact will become much more apparent when what I do is step two here, which is that I'm going to create a query, and I'm going to do it from one of those strongly typed queries, it's going to be customers. Now, while I'm thinking about it, you know, I'm going to stick a using up here. Idea blade dot entity model. Uh, and I'll come back here. And if I look, I see I've got all the kind of linky stuff that I might want to do. I can construct all kinds of link queries here on the client. I'm not going to do that in our demonstration. I'm simply going to take all customers. Uh, and now I can't just use this query synchronously because we're in Silverlight. I have to execute it uh, asynchronously. So I will do that. Now I could do a callback method in here, but instead I'm going to use the uh, operation variation on this. You can see the result of an execute uh, async is an entity query operation uh, instance. And on this uh, instance, I'm going to look for the completed event, which essentially says when you're done querying, raise this event. And we're going to use a Lambda-style event 
a handler here. So we'll get the sender, which we won't use, and the args, which we will. And uh, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to we're finally going to do what it told us to do, which is we're going to set the source of that collection view source resource, and we're going to do that with the arguments. We're going to fish the results out of the arguments, and that's what we're uh, going to use. Someday we will actually have some error handling, um, but we're not doing that right now. That actually is all we need to do to get going, so let's try it. Get some action in the browser. Our grid fills the screen, but no data yet. We're getting it asynchronously, and there they are. And that's a quick way to um, build a model and get some data into a Silverlight UI. Let's review. We started from scratch and applied the DevForce Silverlight application template, which gave us a Silverlight project and a web project. We built our conceptual entity model with the Entity Framework 4 and used the classes DevForce generated from that model on both the web and the Silverlight side. We made a data source out of the customer entity and used that to craft a data grid on our main page view. Then we went into the code behind of the page view and we created a DevForce Entity Manager created a customer query from that manager, invoked it asynchronously, and then poured the results that we fetched from the database into the data grid on our view. That got us going, but it's pretty simplistic. It's fine for a quick demo, it's fine for throwing together a quick model and viewing it in Silverlight, but you wouldn't build a real application this way. In fact, it violates many of the best practices we demand of a real application. Now that you've got your feet wet, Maybe it's time to take the next steps, like download DevForce if you haven't already, and try the tutorials that are recommended on this Getting Started page. You can also go to our website and explore all the online resources we have, such as the DevForce Tour video series and samples. That's it. Thanks for watching the DevForce Silverlight Quickie, and welcome to DevForce.